Hey folks, Steve here with another Fall of the Third Reich video. In this video we'll be looking at turn 5, which means we're getting about to be in the midpoint of the game. Um, probably the, it's still the early part, I guess, right? Turn 5 of 12. Um, and uh, a couple of things I, I just want to get out of the way. I, I always do a little bit of a long intro, I apologize for that, but it does seem like it's always needed for one reason or another. Um, I realize that, you know, when I look at the video views for each video, what will tend to happen is a game's intro gets the most views, turn one gets pretty good views but less, turn two less, turn three less. Ultimately, what I figure happens is, you know, and I and I know this for sure because I do the same thing, I watch other YouTube channels that do war game stuff just for the insight and information and look at a game or whatever. Not everyone's going to stick through and watch every video to the end and get through this entire playthrough. And that's okay. I'm not offended if you get to the point where turn five or six and you feel like you've gotten enough out of the game footage that you know whether or not you like the game or you want to play it or whatever, and you don't watch the rest. That's a-okay with me. I do the same thing with other folks' videos. However good they are, um, these are long videos. They take time. So um, if you're going to stick through for a while longer, you are, you are welcome. I, I enjoy the comments uh, and folks having questions and, and the discussion in the comments section I, that is really enjoyable that I get to do that. That's one of the best perks of these uh, doing these YouTube videos is that I, I make the content and there are a few dedicated folks who uh, chime in and, and ask questions or have comments and it's just fun interfacing with you guys. So um, hope to keep that up. Um, there is one correction I'm going to make, or I'm going to make for myself, um, regarding uh, the end of turn four stuff for the Allies, and I'm allowing myself to fix this mistake uh, because it is something that, if I if I was just paying more attention to, um, would have just been the ideal thing to do, and I just didn't think it through because I I kind of forgot some aspects of the rules when it comes to beachhead markers, so. What did I do? Um, I I sort of changed things. It didn't it didn't functionally change anything that was going on on the map. Really, is I I set a new shafe marker in Palermo um, so that these guys have a supply. You know, regardless of the Zox here, these guys have a supply path um, so that I could peel off in the transit segment the uh, allied invasion marker. I needed to do that, um, I needed to put a shafe marker here to make sure these guys got supply um, before I could remove the beachhead marker, so I had to kind of reverse time and do that. Um, and I was okay with putting a new shafe marker in here and letting the one on the beach marker here go away because I had extra shafe markers that I haven't been using that I could use as much as I want to whatever, at whatever degree that I've wanted to and I've just not because I didn't think it mattered. Here, it might have mattered, and uh, they were always available. I didn't have to pick and choose. I just didn't because I already had the ports set up for supply. So um, I, I allowed myself to correct that so I could pull off the uh, the allied beachhead marker. And the reason why I'm doing that is if you look at pretty much everywhere around Italy and Greece, so the Athens landing marker over here, even the one over by uh, Salonica, uh, those are all AL landing zones, and besides Sicily, everywhere else around Italy are AL landing zones. And according to Constant World and some comments that originated from Ted, um, you can't put a Commonwealth or a U.S. beachhead marker on an AL landing site. That it has to be the AEL beachhead. Now, I could understand like why you might think you should be able to use the Commonwealth or the U.S. beachhead marker in an AL landing zone because AL is just allied. So, well, you can throw in any single beachhead marker in there, right? Well, apparently not. It is like CW have to go into a CW landing zone. Um, the U.S. has to go into one marked U.S. Uh, and the AL has to go in one for AL. It can't go into a CW or a U.S. one. So... In terms of, like, if you weren't playing the historical variant, if you wanted to invade Italy, and you don't even have to do that, but if you wanted to, you would have to wait for uh, turn two for you to get this AL marker, and then you could invade wherever you wanted. And I'm pulling it off into the Mediterranean box so 
that we have it available to do another invasion somewhere else. And you can start to see the way that the Western Allies are supposed to operate. You use your beachhead marker and your shafe markers initially to get to wherever you're going, and ideally you capture some towns and cities nearby that then you can put a shafe marker on and project uh, supply further out, then allowing you to take those beachhead markers off and do additional landings somewhere else. So it's like you have to set up initial infrastructure, um, secure it, and then you can use that invasion beachhead infrastructure somewhere else for another invasion. And that maybe means like moving your shore bombardment ships elsewhere um, and landing craft and all that kind of stuff, right? So we, we are doing that. Um, and now we still have the U.S. marker here, which I guess technically we don't need any more either. Um, and so I, I guess I could pull that off too for, for what it matters. Um, and what we're being left with is like we are stuck with uh, Syracuse and Palermo being our uh, supply sources. We won't have any other ones. Now I could pull off that U.S. marker as well. And what I'll probably end up doing is trying to transfer it up to the England box uh, so it can be used. Um, because from here on out, now that we're on the continent, we're on Italy somehow, um, you know, Sicily's an island, but you get what I mean, um, the U.S. marker doesn't have any more use in the game it, 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 down here. It has it up north, but not down here. So it might it makes sense to move it, and we keep our AL marker down here because the AL marker can't really be used in the Northwest Theater because all the landing zones in France are either U.S. or Commonwealth-specific. So um, whatever we decide to do from here on out in Italy is going to be with the AL marker. That's ready. The U.S. marker will be ready to be moved to England. Um, so we should be able to do a lot more stuff uh, up there. When the time comes, we've still got to make a fight of this uh, for what German units are occupying Italy. So there you go. So one correction, or rather two, I guess, since I removed that that marker, but we're still good down here for everything else, like air tracing is fine, supply is fine, assuming we don't lose Syracuse. It's not going to be risky, because you'll see that all these Italian units are going to go away here very shortly. So uh, there you go. There's one quick intro. Um, there's one other thing I want to talk about, but uh, I'm going to take a drink of... Uh, water before I get into this other topic that I want to address before we move too much further on. So I'll put a cut. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to talk about before we continue on to turn five proper are the victory conditions and, and trying to assess where we sit right now in terms of victory. Um, so I'm just going to reference the rule book here. There's a rule piece, a rules PDF that you can always use, but I'm just going to look at here. So here, here are various victory conditions. Um, now, uh, the primary way the game could end is that the Allied player, um, assuming you're playing a two-player game, meaning the Western Allies and the Soviets control all four factory hexes, Essen, Dortmund, Berlin, and the Upper Silesian Industrial Region. Um, so yeah, that's, that's sort of an obvious one, right? Because that would effectively put everybody else out of supply. They can't build anything. That's it. Game over, right? We've captured Berlin and all those other areas. But then we get into some of these other cases. So... First one, if the Allied player controls Paris and any two factories in 1943, then the Allies would win. Well, what would that take? Um, in 1943, which means you have to do it within the first two turns, um, Paris is several hexes away from the coast, and these factory hexes, you know, if you're going to get two, it's going to be Essen in uh, Dortmund, likely. This would be like some overwhelming Western Ally victory, well, the only way you could really do that, you would have to do it in two turns, I think, because what you would be doing is saying, in the Mediterranean, we're not going to invade Sicily or Italy at all. Um, then you would transit your U.S. and C.W. markers to England, and then on turn two, you would try to perform an invasion of France. Um, and if I look at the invasion bits. Um, let's see where it says in here. Invasions in the Northwest Theater may not take place on turns three to five. So you're basically saying, like, you're going to do an invasion of France. It's going to be on turn two after you move the beachhead markers up there. You're not invading 
Italy at all, and you make your landings on turn two, and then you're using the rest of turn two and turn three to capture Paris and Essen. And I think the only way you could even conceivably do that is if um, you, you manage to come in here, knock something loose, get to Paris, uh, at the end of turn two you peel off the beachhead markers and you invade over here, and then somehow you push through and grab those. So you're, you're making like, oh yeah, I guess you can't even do that. I don't know how you, I don't know how you get that victory condition. I think that's very difficult. I'm not sure that you can do it. I really doubt that it's, it's very feasible to do this first one. So what the allied player would be doing is giving up Italy, attacking Italy, focusing on the Northwest in a very short timetable and trying to make that happen. Now, it, it, this still might be good to try, right? This would be one of those ahistorical options, just try to invade France, ignore Italy, and go for the throat. That might work. You probably won't win in 43, but it might work, but this would be how you could do it. The next one, um, and, and, and again, just to, to clarify what I mean, you could do that, and maybe you don't win that automatic victory in 43, but at least you're on the continent um, doing stuff, and maybe that's how you're going to win. But then you have all these Italian units, and, and if you're not down here in Italy, then the rest of these you know, German units are up here, and it just changes the game a lot, right? It might be interesting to see. Um, second case is the Allied player controls Berlin, Rome, and Paris in 1944. Now, this one might not be so bad, uh, but what would it require? Well, 1944 ends on turn at the end of turn 10, so you have 10 turns to capture Berlin. Um, uh, or, I'm sorry, oh, we'll say Rome first, right? That would probably be the first one, right? So you had to have executed a, an Italian campaign and captured Rome. Uh, which is sort of, you know, at least one of the reasons to, to, to knock Italy out. You want Milan and Trieste if you can get them. Um, so you get Rome, and then somehow you've also managed to grab Paris and Berlin, which is way over here. So you've either done, you know, pretty pretty darn well as the Western Allies, right? You get Rome, you get Paris, that, that's probably conceivable. But then that requires getting to Berlin, and unless the Western Allies have done such a good job that they're the ones getting to Berlin that quickly, that might require that the Soviets get Berlin. But I don't see how likely, you know, I'm not sure how likely that could be. So it, this is like a capitals victory rather than an overwhelming early Western victory. Um, and it's conceivable, but I'm not sure, you know, like you might really need turns, uh, I'm sorry, I guess it's the end of turn nine is when 44 ends, not 10. You would need turns 10, 11, 12 to maybe get some of these last areas, so I'm not sure how likely that will be. Um, the other one, next one, is if there are no allied mechanized units on the map outside the England and Med boxes at any point in 1944 or 45, then the Axis wins an instant victory. This is basically the allies totally effing up really bad and requires that the Germans somehow have pushed the allies off the continent, either in Italy or in France, and that they're not even on the board at all. We obviously avoided that by getting into Sicily, um, but if somehow, like, the Germans moved a bunch of stuff down to Sicily and, like, knocked these guys out, then at the end of the turn, if we didn't land anywhere else or reinforce anywhere else, the Axis would win, right? So this would be like, if I, if I really had a hard time over here, that could have been feasible, that the, the Axis could have caused this victory. It was conceivable because of my really bad invasion die rolls. But I think in most games, this would be incredibly unlikely and would likely only occur under really bad Western Allied play or huge mistakes that the Axis exploit. And they're probably taking a chance because that means they're focusing in Italy or wherever more than on the Eastern Front. Right? Maybe, maybe you try to invade France early, and that gets messed up real bad, then maybe the Axis wins that way. Um, then uh, there are no supplied Soviet units outside the USSR in any turn 1945. So this is the last couple of turns of the game. Conceivably, and, I've, and I guess on I read on Consum World, folks have done this, where if you play a strong enough defense on the East Front, you can keep a Soviet Union you know, in the USSR into the last, you know, on turn 10, basically. If, if they're not in... If they're not outside of the USSR by turn 10, and you can hold them in there on turn 10, Axis wins the game. They've kept the, you know, the East Front has failed to reach uh, the Third Reich territories. And so 
I could see that being feasible if you were playing the Germans better than I'm playing it, so probably not likely for this game. But I have read that it's feasible. You could do it. You have a good defense. You've messed up the Soviets' line of advance. If you delay them long enough that they can't get out of the USSR proper, you keep them out of Romania, you keep them out of uh, Slovakia, you keep them, keep them out of Eastern Germany, um, then you know, you're potentially good to go, I guess. Um, so that's the other case. And then finally, if none of the above apply, and this is what I think is it may be how our game is going to go, if none of the above apply, uh, at the end of turn 12, the Allies win if they control Berlin and 17 other victory hexes, or 19 victory hexes, excluding Berlin, if not the Axis player wins. So this is the ultimate you know, opportunity for the Axis to win the game, or really their main path to victory, which is playing out the clock, performing well defensively, and running out that clock, right? Um, and, and I was trying to do the victory point counts uh, last night, just looking at the map, and um, you kind of need to be, like, at Germany and, and have taken some areas over here to get 19 without Berlin. But that includes grabbing pretty much everything else, like you have to get... Athens. You, you very likely need to get Belgrade. You have to get all three hexes in Italy. You have to get kind of everything over here and everything over here just so, and you can make it out to be about um, 19 hexes. Obviously, we hope to have knocked out some of the industrial regions uh, or factory hexes for, for additional VP or get to Berlin. And I think if you're able to get to Berlin, you probably manage to get other areas. So, I mean... I, 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 th that makes sense, but I do think it, it really comes down to, like, okay, if you capture all the f factory hexes, you've captured all the important regions, and if you focus on beating up Germany, you can win that way. The other way is for the Allies to get those 17, 19 victory hexes, but that requires, you know, liberating Europe, more broadly speaking. So it's like, do you focus on just shutting Germany down and their factory hexes, or... Um, you know, are you trying to liberate all of Europe and, and making sure you're getting all these other areas for sure? And I could see as an allied player where you have you may have to make a decision and say, well, I'm, I'm going to spend most of my effort trying to get into these hexes, you know, here, 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 and here, and I'm not going to worry so much about Yugoslavia. I'm not going to worry about, uh, you know, Athens or Trieste. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to just focus up here. I think there's a distinct sort of, like, strategy you could try to pursue there that they are distinct from one another. Um, I think at this point in the game, I'm, I'm going for a, a broad victory point victory as the Allies just because, look, I, I, I want to take Italy. I want to knock Italy out. I want to get, you know, if I'm already getting to Rome, I might as well try to push up and grab these victory hexes. But it's really going to depend, I guess, on how well uh, D-Day goes and whether or not we have a Battle of the Bulge. And, you know, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of factors yet. I don't think I could... If I thought about it more before I started, I might have said, oh, I'm going to focus on doing this. And maybe that means I wouldn't have used the historical variant. But having used the historical variant, I, I do want to get into Athens. I do want to try to work my way up through Italy and pursue a fairly historical broad strategy. And maybe I'll still be able to capture all the victory or all the uh, factory hexes in Germany. We'll see. Um, so there you go, guys. Another very long intro, but I think they were worth talking about so that Folks understand the framing of the game a little bit more. There are ways to be ahistorical. You are not tied into attacking Sicily on turn one. It's your only option. You can do other things. It means you might have to wait till turn two uh, to do some of it. There's still plenty of stuff going on on the east front while well, that's happening. But you do have options. Uh, I just, for this playthrough, have focused on a more, more historical route just because I'm interested in seeing how the game uh, can portray the sort of historical narrative if I keep close to that narrative as we go. So, there you go. Okay, let's really get into turn five, and I'm going to try really hard to move fast this time, guys. Let's get this video done in under an, an, an hour. That's my hope. Okay, going into turn five, uh, some things are really straightforward. The reinforcements, uh, we got yet another American unit uh, in the England box, so we've just got a whole bunch of stuff waiting uh, in the wings, and then we got our Commonwealth beachhead marker back, which um, I believe because it was lost uh, in the Mediterranean front and has to go into the Mediterranean box, I was trying to find um, 
I was trying to find if there was some way I could put it in the England box, and it, I, I don't think it can come off the turn track as a reinforcement there because it was eliminated down here in the med. So I, I might be missing something there. So it, too, is sitting in the Mediterranean box with all of our beachhead markers. So we now have the Commonwealth one, the U.S. one, and the Allied one. Uh, we will really only use the AL one from here on out, and we'll be moving uh, the other beachhead markers to uh, the England box at the end of the turn so that they can be used in our uh, D-Day invasion, which, by the way, it's probably important to, to point out that um, we are now one turn away from the D-Day stuff. And I should look at the reinforcements for turn six. So we're going to get a bunch of these uh, FUSAG markers. Um, I'll explain those in probably next video. Uh, we get a Mulberry marker, and we get some more paratroopers, which is good, um, and some other stuff starts to come into play. Um, so I guess I have to decide at some point, you know, when do I want to pull paratroopers from the Mediterranean front and move them to uh, the, you know, the Northwestern front. Um, they may still have uses right now, you know, in the Mediterranean, at least until we clean up some of Italy, then we could probably look to uh, transit those guys uh, up to England to support the, the Northwest stuff. But um, just just depends on you know, uh, this depends on how we, how well we want to operate there. Um, okay, uh, I think we are good on reinforcements. Um, and then we have strategic air. So I think I'm just going to keep all the air stuff the same. So Luftwaffe is going to be home front, med, east front. The bomber command will be factory bombing. The 8th Air Force will be factory bombing. We really want to drive that replacement rate down. I think there's a line of thinking like, why do anything but factory bombing? And I think there's something to that. It's like, well, you know, do I really think interdiction would, would help a lot? Well, not really. The Germans aren't even attacking very much, so maybe that's going to be more useful later when we're in France and there's a potential for Battle of the Bulge type stuff. Um, carpet bombing, you know, not yet. So really, this seems to be, you know, oil might be worth it, but so far I'm not interested in it quite yet. I really do think a large, uh, a, a large amount of this is just going to come down to factory bombing. So that's what we're going to do. Um, someone did clarify in the comments of the other video I did that there is some clarity uh, in terms of errata on the Luftwaffe replacement. So even if we roll for Bomber Command and the 8th Air Force, if Bomber Command and the 8th Air Force both do replacement point hits on the Germans, they only will get rid of one Luftwaffe marker, not two. Um, that's apparently how I'm reading that. So I guess that makes sense. That still lines up with what the player aid sheet says. The rules are less clear, but that is the intention. You can't lose multiple uh, on such a roll if you're all doing bombing. So this might, you know, maybe that's the reason why I could do a different action, because that individually might do a different, you know, might cause a different impact. To those Luftwaffe markers. But we'll see what we got. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and start to look at uh, the bombing then. So uh, factory bombing, first we'll roll for Bomber Command. This is a minus three to the die roll. Uh, I rolled a five, so that is a two result. So the Germans are going to lose two replacement points, and the Luftwaffe will be eliminated. So the Americans will roll as well. And they did the same, a 5 uh, minus 2, uh, or rather minus 3 is 2. So a total of 4 replacement points will be lost for the Germans, and they have a Luftwaffe marker that is currently eliminated, and we pull off a Luftwaffe marker from the Mediterranean front. Um, so that's going to impact what the Germans decide to do with their replacement points. Um, the trick is going to be, like, do we, do we bother to put any, you know, throwaway replacement points in the Mediterranean theater for air defense um, or air coverage, uh, knowing that we're already losing so many replacement points as it is, and maybe I'm just going to forego the Luftwaffe marker for that reason. I think that it may be worthwhile. The thing about it is, if we lose another Luftwaffe marker next turn, um, then we lose our air coverage in the Eastern Front, and we won't get our bonuses to the... Uh, 
you know, uncertain core strength, you know, that having that air coverage has allowed us to make it so that even our C units each have at least three combat factors. If I lose that air, then I lose that capability, and, and it could mean that the East Front is even worse off, right? There's no, you know, less air coverage. So, I don't know. I'll have to think on that, um, what we want to do. That net means, however, that in terms of replacement points, the uh, Germans who would ordinarily get 12 uh, now are only going to get, what, 8. Because they, the Allied bombing took 4 away. We, are, we, we reduced it by 33%, and they're down to 8. Um, which is, that's pretty good, I think, from the angle of the, uh, the Allies there. So there we go. Um, we'll get into the replacements, and we'll figure all that out, and I'll come back, and we'll think through the next Allied invasion. Okay, uh, so I did the replacement phase, so with the Germans having eight replacement points, I decided to not rebuild the Luftwaffe right now. Um, we'll see how well that works. That might be a big mistake, but we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Um, and instead, they used everything on replacements for the front. Um, now, 33% of eight is 2.6 something or other, but you round down, so um, I assume that means round down the whole numbers, so instead of three replacement points being used on mechanized units, the Germans could only use two, at least that's my interpretation. So um, they went for quantity more than quality uh, so that they can cover more hexes right now, um, which has its own bummers, right, because if it's a one-step unit, um, it can be obliterated more easily than a two-step unit, but I'm just trying to get something covered so that we don't have these huge gaps in our lines on the east front. But all the German reinforcements went over in this these areas so that they can be sent to the front, which isn't too terribly far away now, really. Um, and in terms of the number of hexes to move, an operational move should get us there, uh, I think, in most cases. Uh, the Allies, the Western Allies, didn't have much to top off uh, in all actuality, so um, they were... Uh, replenishing some American units in Sicily, and that's all. Everything else is topped off. Oh, uh, the Germans rebuilt one Romanian unit, Romanian unit which will uh, go into Plutzi and will be going up to the line soon. Um, and then the Soviets had their eight, and they had six steps in the eliminated box, so they're actually all topped off as well. Um, so all, all is well uh, for them. Um, so now we get to the Allied invasion phase, and there is something special now that we need to execute, which is a little bit different than just getting into the Allied phase. So, uh, Italy surrenders at any time during the Allied invasion phase that the Allies control Rome, two or more Italian cities, one Italian city, and two or more towns. One of those three cases. But we have Syracuse, a city, and two or more towns, Gala and Palermo, which means that you know, any time during the invasion phase... Uh, which means immediately, in my mind, because the case is already true. So before we even select beachhead placement, this will take place. Um, when Italian surrender is triggered, remove all Italian units from the game. So we're going to stop a moment and peel all of these guys off the map. And there's many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten... 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 steps removed from the map, controlled by the Axis. Um, and they're just straight up out of the game, um, as well as the unit in the eliminated pile. Uh, so that's a pretty, pretty clean uh, re removal from that perspective. And then some additional units are going to come into play. So the turn after Italian surrender, the Axis player receives two Axis puppet Italian units in Axis reinforcement segment. Segment. So I'm going to reach into the bag and we get these conditional units. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, what you have to be careful of is that there is two Axis ones, and there's an Allied one. The Allied one is a darker green. It's more more like the American green but you get this unit as the ally. So, um, the turn after Italian Surrender. So on turn six, the Axis will get those conditional Italian units. 
Um, and then the turn after Italy surrenders, so also the next turn, the Allies received their pro-Allied Italian unit. So we'll just put them up there. So they're out of their little baggie I had specific for that purpose, and they will come in. And what does that do to our Mediterranean front? Well, you can see now the way for these Commonwealth guys is clear. They can move up. All these guys can move up. They can be trying to attack um, this German unit in Messina. Uh, to try to get access to the boot. Uh, and you can see now there are a lot more beachheads that are open uh, to be attacked. And so, like, you know, what do we want to do? Do we want to invade into Anzio, sneak in behind these guys, take Rome from behind them? That would be a, that would be a potential problem. Now, it won't put these guys out of supply down here because they'll be able to trace to places like Taranto or Bari or Messina where, you know, unless we put a Zoc here and here, you know, along this part of central Italy, they'll be able to trace a line of communication up. Um, but now we have to make a hard decision. So that, the, the Italian surrender is complete. Good job, guys. Now we need to decide what to do with our uh, invasion. And again, while we have the Commonwealth and U.S. markers, the only one we can really use in the Mediterranean, uh is the AL Allied beachhead marker. We still can't do Northwest Europe yet uh, because we don't have any beachhead markers up there and even if we did, this is a non-invasion turn, I think. I might have to double check that, but we're not set up for it anyway. So we need to decide where, down here, do we want to have our uh, next, um, our next thing happen, right? And so, you know, an obvious choice might be over here and try to get into Naples. Um, you know, that would that would be valuable. That would be helpful if we could do it. Um, we might have some air problems. I think that would be the one challenge. Uh, we could try to get into Livorno. That would be helpful and might help knock some guys out of supply eventually or something. Um, so I need to th sit and think through what I want to do here. I think this is the first opportunity as the Western Allies, like I really have a wide decision space. Like I can do a lot of different things. I can choose to go a lot of different places, but I can only go one. Um, and I have enough, you know, stacking guys that, you know, I can, I can make an attempt and then these guys would continue to push through here and try to make our way out. That would be the you know, what we, we, we want to try to do. We want to knock this loose and start to work our way up. Um, but we need to get somewhere where we'll have supply on the other side of the straits because all of our supply right now just gets us over here. It's not far enough. We need to get another port. That makes me think Naples is the option. Um, or Livorno, I guess. It has to be some place that we can push supply out of. And if we can't do that... Um, and it's probably not worth trying. Uh, Marseille is certainly an option, um, but even then, that doesn't get us everywhere we would want to go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I mean, Marseille actually might not be a terrible idea, but we have to land and then attack. Um, so, yeah, there's just, it, it's going to be tough. We have to decide where it makes the most sense. Marseille or, or Naples, going for one of these big port areas, is probably the best choice. Um, rather than to get caught up over here, where there's not very many places to go from there, um, I'm not sure. I'll have to think about it. I'll be back once I've made a decision. Okay, so for our invasion, here this is where, this is where I'm kind of stuck. There's no perfect option. Um, we could go for Marseille, uh, and in fact, you know, it's not even, I don't even think it'd be that hard to get an overwhelming success um, and maybe attack Marseille and take it. Now, the benefits would be we could potentially be throwing uh, supply 16 hexes away. So, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, you know, that gets you all of Italy and, and covers potentially out even into Munich. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
11, 12, 13, 14, Yeah, you could get you could get to Munich, but that would be as far as you could get, I guess. Um, and it would even get you kind of down down this way. Um, right? Four times four sixteen, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 13, 14, 15, 16. So you could get almost all the way to Naples with Marseille. The problem is we've still got to get over here to be in that supply range with these guys. So we're there's going to be some wonkiness where we're not going to be able to get supply into southern Italy and we're going to be operating with only a handful of units out of Marseille unless we ship them from here to there, which might not be a terrible idea. We could certainly try to do it, but it just seems so far flung. Like, we want to get Marseille, but right now might not be the best time to do it. Um, our other options, Livorno is not a terrible idea. It's within Allied Air Trace, which is good. It is defended by an armor unit, which is a bummer. But if we were able to take it, then we could potentially cut off the Axis supply path here uh, and force them to respond and pull back. And the only problem is, I, again, still have this supply problem. How am I going to get guys all the way up there? Um, you know, the main thing being we'd have to, like, do this big scramble up and try to attack Naples and hope that we don't fail and then have these guys stuck out of supply somehow. Um, so there's a lot of risk in those actions. We could simply try to get into here and attack Naples or, or make an effort for Naples. Naples, if we were to get it, solves a lot of our supply problems um, straight up. You know, it becomes less of a problem um, for sure. But we're going to be exposed, so whatever we get in here, if we get an overwhelming success in attack, okay, we get into Naples, we're okay. Um, then the real problem is just going to be, it's going to take us time to get these guys through here, up there, and then we're going to be fighting in the mountains, trying to break the, the back of uh, the Germans there. But we have an easier time getting to Foggia, getting us another Air Force. So if I, if I try to figure out all these options... I, I'm just ruling out Anzio entirely because I don't think um, I, I don't think it would do us a whole lot of good. Um, grabbing Rome is great, but it doesn't you know we still have a lot of supply, supply issues to contend with. Um, I think we try to go for Naples. I think that's just the best option. So I'm going to put our Allied marker there. The one bummer is that we're going to be outside of Allied Air Trace. One, two, three. Four. Yeah, we're just we're just outside of it. One, two, three, four. Um, if we had taken Messina before this, then there's the potential that we would have Allied air support, but we don't. So it's going to be Allied marker. We're going to have our Canadian and British mechanized units with uh, paratroopers. And so what do we have? Terrain that would be rough terrain. So a what? Minus one. Uh, but there's no defender in this hex, as it happens. Um, paratrooper gives us plus one. So we just have we have a plus one on our die roll. And that's it. So it'd be nice if we roll a five or a six. We're not in allied air range. That's our big problem right now. Um, but I don't see any other way to to solve that problem. Um, oh, we can't even use the uh, paratrooper, actually, because we're not in allied air range. So do we even want to try to do this? Then it's a minus one again. We know how that works. Uh, hmm. <laughs> maybe, we, maybe we do want to try for Livorno instead. Um, we would end up with a, plus, a net plus one. Gosh, what a tough decision. Um, there's no way I could roll another one or a two on an invasion, right? Sure, surely not. Surely I can take this hex. It's just a minus one, right? We don't have a, we don't have allied air range. We don't have a paratrooper, so we're just trying to make a landing down here. <laughs> That's it. 
Um, we could maybe land over here in Bari. That might be better. Um, maybe that's what we do. Maybe we try to land in Bari instead. And then that way, we're causing... Yeah, maybe that's what we do. This is probably the better move, is to land near Bari. So then that way, we, we have... It's just a straight-up die roll. We don't have a minus one. Um, that's... Yeah, I think that's probably better. Um... <laughs> At least we're close to Foggy. Yeah, that would be that's that's a key thing, and we can cut this guy out of supply. So we'll do that. When still no paratrooper and no uh, no air trace, so it's just a straight up die roll. Um, I can't roll a one, right? Okay, we got a five. So uh, reduce one invading unit, eliminate one defending unit. Um, blah blah blah. Attackers advance. Um, so we'll reduce a unit. And then we advance into Bari. So that's our successful invasion. Um, and we are good to go there. So that's it. And now we'll go to the Axis OKW. I'm just going to do uh, OKH phase. I'll just do the whole Axis um, marker purchase and operational movement and combat at once because this video will be long if I don't. And we'll come back and show what the Axis were able to do with the main part of their turn. Um, I've done the Axis stuff, but I did want to show, um, I forgot about the Yugoslavian units when Italy surrendered. So when Italy surrenders, immediately when that happens, not during the reinforcement phase, at least the way I'm reading the rules, um, three additional Yugoslavian mountain units are placed in mountains uh, in uh, Yugoslavia. And they have to be at least two hexes away, basically one intervening hex, the way I read that, um, in... Uh, at least two hexes away from Axis units. So I've got a guy up here in Zagreb, one guy over here, guy uh, over here, and they're kind of situated like right now the... Uh, the units that are there, I mean, it, I don't know. There's sort of like a mini front that can happen here. Um, these units are always in supply, uh, uh, or always in supply, in an en and in any adjacent hex, um, but are out of supply in any other hexes. And they can be in supply. What's interesting is I could conceivably take Trieste. I don't know that I would need to, but I, but I potentially could. Um, later. <laughs> uh, so they're in supply, they uh, are, they act like they're in command all the time, and um, they can't be replaced, so we have to be careful with them. Um, but we could, I guess, like uh, maybe what I should do is have this guy over here, have this guy over here like so, and we can start to, like, try to surround these Axis units and just cause problems for them. Um, and right now, the, the Axis can't afford to spend any command down here uh, dealing with this. So, you know, this is a little, you know, a, a microcosm combat situation. So there you go. That, that's what's going on down there. Um, we'll see how it all plays out. Uh, in terms of movement, the Axis unit, now that we can give up Messina... Uh, because it can't provide an allied air trace up here. Um, we pulled back across the strait for defensive purposes. Um, this unit moved from this hex here, because it's no longer in danger of being invaded, and to restore its own supply line. Not that I think we're going to be able to do much. We can't, we can't move past the Zoc of the British units. Um, and I otherwise move some more units down here just to kind of help protect the line since that's where the action is going to happen. Uh, but we have to be careful because the Allies could pull that Allied marker out and try to invade somewhere else later. <laughs> so it, it could happen. Um, I'm just not sure when or, or how that might occur. Um, but they could do it. So I can't just say like, oh, I'm going to empty all these other hexes. I still can't really do that um, because there could potentially be uh, repercussions to that. On the east... Front. I don't. I'm not done moving these guys, but um, 
I guess I should finish doing that before I talk anymore. <laughs> okay, now comp now movement is complete. So you can see I'm, I'm sort of pulling back. You know, I'm still watching the line of the swamps here, I'm forming a line through here, anchored on Odessa and anchored on Riga up here. These guys, I can't do anything. Um, the Stavka markers just... Uh, maybe I could use the Stavka markers a little more intelligently, and that's maybe what I should have done, but... Um, I'm willing to let those two guys go because they're just C-rated to save the rest of the line. We're going to give up to Lenin to the Soviets, but um, that's just reality. Um, you know, we're going to get to the point where we need to hold this uh, is much more important than worrying about to Lenin one you know, one area. Up. Um, in terms of combats, uh, the only combats that we might do are going to be on the east front here, and I just need to decide if we're going to actually do any. Uh, they would only be, obviously, over here or down here where the command markers are. But I think they're just going to end up being bloody. Maybe we attack with the guy over here because he's kind of surrounded by Zox anyway. He might as well try to take somebody with him. Um, but hard to hard to say. <laughs> hard, hard to figure out like what is real, truly going to be the right move here. Um, so I'll ponder that. If I don't do any Axis combats, we'll, we'll just adjudicate the uh, Allied Soviet reaction phase and show the output of that. Okay, so we did end up having a couple of combats. Um, we did knock out a unit over here against the Soviets, uh, as well as up here, and actually pushed out of Minsk a little bit um, without really losing a whole lot as the Germans. So it, it kind of worked out. Um, but then in the Allied and Soviet reaction phase, the Allies reacted, the, the Americans moved up and eliminated the unit across the Straits, but could not advance. Uh, but the gateway to southern Italy is starting to open up. The Soviets assaulted and took uh, Venitsa, which also happened to be where we had an OKW marker, which meant we couldn't do exploit movement with the Germans down there. Um, and there wasn't really anything for us to do over here. So all we all we really have done, I guess, is we we tried to, you know, give some paper cuts to the Russians so that they don't overwhelm us with armor. But it didn't do a whole lot, um, and we're trying to maintain coherency uh, on the front. But the you know the reaction moves the Allies used to to do some decent attacks and kind of help. The Nitz is going to be important because it's going to be um, a launch point for the next major Allied offensive which will be coming up here in a moment. I also did the attrition phase, which got rid of one German unit up there. Um, so, you know, there's some some things certainly being lost. Um, and as it happens, uh, the guy down here is actually still... Well, let me count. One, two, three, four. He is actually still in supply, uh, but not for long, I suspect. So, attrition phase was over. The exploitation movement, again, wasn't... A whole lot to do. At the cleanup phase, we picked up the remaining OKW, OKH markers. Um, of, or I guess it was just OKH, because I only had OKH markers in these front. No OKW at all. And now we're going to get to the Allied side of the phase, um, their main phases. So I'll go ahead and take care of all of the Allied action phase stuff, um, and I'll show the end results of that before Axis reaction. Um, I suspect we're going to see a lot of stuff happening in Italy now that there's actually space to move. Uh, and the Soviets are going to start to close in and, you know, operate uh, how they've been meaning to operate. So, um, yeah, we'll see you here in a second, guys, uh, for turn five. Okay, so um, here we are after the Allied operational movement and Soviet operational movement, and actually after the Allied combat segment. I did do Western Allied combat. We haven't done the Soviet combat yet, because I want to talk through what we're looking at. So... Down here in the south, um, we are now properly in southern Italy. Um, we've left behind Sicily. There's no way for the Axis units to really get down here now, unless we have a total collapse, which I think is unlikely. So I was able to get these guys moved up. Uh, sort of some issues with the uh, airborne unit in terms of its movement. I might have, might have mm, miscalculated what I wanted to do with him. Um, maybe I should just leave him like here and then he can strat move somewhere else. Maybe that's what I'll do. Um, but, you know, basically we were able to, uh, because there weren't Axe's Zox here, and I maybe I should have sent a sacrificial unit 
out here to stop them, but um, I guess I didn't think of that. I'm not the best player in the world uh, on first play here. A lot of these allied units snaked their way up with operational movement and actually um, captured Foggia and are set up to make a move on Naples soon, and we did eliminate that unit uh, there. So, you know, basically, we have our shafe marker, our four-value shafe marker, uh, operating out of the uh, Bari beachhead, which gives us enough supply to reach up in here. Uh, we'll take Naples, we'll move the shafe make marker to Naples, and that's going to give us, you know, basically the rest of our supply to conquer Italy. Now, we'll probably want the shafe 4 marker in France at some point, um, so that we can get it to Antwerp, uh, but we'll have to play it by ear. The nice thing is, by the time you get to the Allied action phase. You can kind of swap around your shape markers as needed to do, you know, what you need to do. Um, but I could certainly see a case where, like, you know, maybe we, you know, take this area, we get up to Rome, then we move a beachhead marker and shape over here to take Marseille, and then the supply gets us northern Italy this way rather than try to get it through there. I don't know. It, you know, it's its own little challenge, I guess, as we are working our way through um, the front. But, you know, you can see now we are going to have next turn, not just the attacks in France, likely in terms of D-Day, um, but we should see some, uh, actual combats occur on this defensive line the Germans have protecting Naples and, and Rome and all that good stuff. Um, here, the, uh, Yugoslavian units are, are trying to just pick fights where they can with the little guys. Um, because they can't be replaced, if I get an exchange result, um, we will potentially <laughs> have some losses uh, that we can't replace. And so my strategy right now is to try to figure out a way uh, to um, isolate and remove units. Uh, and we're starting to work our way into doing that. Um, we'll see how well it works. I don't know. Less, less important theater. But here on the East Front, I have uh, an attack set up here that will um, likely see the fall of Sevastopol. Uh, I have a marker here, which is intended to help support an attack into Odessa, which will be a very important uh, place for us to go to uh, sort of come around this outside edge of the Axis line and put Romania uh, under threat. And that's going to cause, you know, much like in the Dark Valley where there are rules where Romania and Bulgaria fall, the same sort of thing can kind of happen here, and we'd like that to happen for sure. So definitely want to prioritize that. We also have a stuff marker here with the idea that we're going to continue to kind of break through this nice flat terrain and get us, you know, moving uh, over there. And I've sort of deprioritized up here for the moment because of the bad weather, um, to me, it just makes, you know, we can't spread out uh, our command as much. Might as well focus on the areas that we can make good use of uh, the, the terrain and everything else we've got. Um, but up here, like, I do have it set up that I can do uh, some slight attacks in front of Minsk with the idea that potentially with exploitation movement, we'll be able to take Minsk, and then we'll have our ability next turn, when the weather's better, to put... Um, a Stavka marker in the city, on the city side, activate a lot more and collapse this part of the front. Um, but like, I can't attack up here, because I don't have Stavka, or up here, and I even have to watch where I am in supply, uh, based on the Zox of the Axis units there, and, and distance. So, um, we can't, we, you know, we took Talinin, uh, we did take that, but we haven't been able to, to come adjacent to the entire Axis line there. So I'm going to do some combats in these areas, um, and then when we're done with that, we'll we'll see what the lay of the land is, when Axis will attempt to do some sort of reaction, probably more in the east than in the west, but we'll see. Okay, here we are after the combat. So we have cleared the way to Sevastopol. We'll take that in the exploitation phase, and that whole part of the front will be done. Um, I... Uh, Oh, you know what? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't attack in one other place. So um, let's just do that now. My bad. I am forgetful. Uh, I forgot to do my attacks up here. So I think what we'll do, do let's see, nine, 
11 to here. So that would be 4. 11 to 4. It's 2 to 1. We got a DR result. Defender retreats. It's got to go. Um, yeah, retreats two hexes. Okay. Retreats two hexes, bop bop. And these guys advance like so. And then we're attacking here with just six. So roll for combat, or roll for the combat strength of German, also a four. So this one actually could be pretty bloody. Yeah, AX. Um, okay. So we lose once lose two steps from the Soviets, but we do cause a step loss if we don't advance. So um, whoops. He's eliminated, and this guy does not advance, so... Okay, so that's the end of the Soviet combat. You can see we're, we're making some headway. Uh, we do have several Soviet losses, um, but I think we're in pretty good shape, all things considered, uh, still. So, uh, now we have the Axis reaction phase. Um, to be perfectly honest, on the West, I'm not sure... There's a whole lot that we want to do. Um, only thing I can think of is maybe well, I think we're okay. Um, I think we'll move one unit into Rome. Okay, so you didn't see it on camera, but I moved one unit to Rome. The reason is that the Allies could potentially have a uh, paratrooper unit drop behind enemy lines, um, and we don't want that to happen. I'm not sure how relevant that will really be, but we want to keep that from happening if we can help it. We don't want to give up Rome as a freebie, because it's really one of the linchpins of our supply in Italy for the moment. Um, for the east, uh, uh, east reaction phase, um, I mean, I'm s certainly uh, we got to do something. Um, and I don't want to lose Minsk, so I think what we'll do is... Ugh. And we could just react that unit into Minsk and call it a day. Um, and at least we're projecting Zox, and we're holding, and it can't just be taken, an exploitation movement. So I, that's probably the best thing that we can do, because we can't do much, um, but that, that keeps us safe. Um, so then, attrition, um, I am pretty certain everybody is good to go on attrition for the Allied side. Um, I guess the only possible thing I see, one, two, three, four, no, everyone's good. Um, yeah, everyone's good on the Soviet side. Uh, they have plenty of, you know, ability to count back, uh, hexes for supply, so... Uh, that just leaves exploitation, so in terms of exploitation, down here, this unit I intentionally left in range of the Stavka unit can move into Sevastopol, that gives another victory point, we're up to six there. Um, well, let's see... Uh, ignoring infantry zocks helps a lot. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So if we're putting this guy out of supply, um, I guess I could do this, just to ensure that he can't get through behind us and cause havoc. 
Um, but over here, I guess we don't have a whole lot that we can do. We can do something. that, I guess, but we, it's not like we can do a huge exploitation. We just don't really have the capability to do that. Um, and what's funny is like we don't even have a huge amount of Forces to work with there. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I think that's it for exploitation movement. Nothing too crazy, but we are uh, going to end up screwing over the Romanians pretty badly here. There's, they're, they don't have much they're going to be able to do. Um, we've already got one guy sort of surrounded, and then the rest of these, I mean, they're going to try to get the heck out of Dodge, but I think they're going to have a hard time doing it. Uh, we just happen to have enough Axis armor steps of the Zox that were keeping some things from being knocked totally loose. Uh, but you can imagine, like, Bucharest is in sight right now. So we knock out Romania and Bulgaria from the war. The Balkans becomes a lot easier to deal with. Um, we can get somebody into Athens and take that. And then it's, you know, how do we progress uh, through Hungary to, uh, you know, southern Germany and all of that. Which... In, in the Dark Valley was actually a challenge because we had to move through the mountains um, and it was kind of slower going, finding our way around. In this game, with the operational movement being what it is, it, it might not actually be that hard to slip through and slip around and, and get like into Cluj for supply, for instance, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, uh, exploitation movement is over. Uh, the transit phase, um, I'll just do all the transit stuff off camera for a quick minute and then we'll come back and take a look at the overall situation for the uh, cleanup phase and end of, video, end of the video. Okay, so um, strategic movement was pretty straightforward. We got our, uh, we just had our paratroopers come up here. We got somebody out of the Mediterranean box. We moved the beachhead markers and the one uh, British paratrooper to the England box, thinking um, we should be able to operate without a huge amount of paratroopers in the med now. We can focus on just busting up the Germans. So we have a lot of stuff ready to rock and roll for uh, D-Day, uh, presumably. Uh, in theory, that's the idea. We'll see how it goes. Um, the Axis really didn't have much to transit move, and neither did the Russians. Uh, really, just the Germans moved the unit up uh, into... Um, Minsk just to kind of help defend it and we'll see how all this can can work uh, in the upcoming turn um, but there's definitely a big old problem uh, oh and we move some guys up into Romania from Bulgaria um, to maybe try to do something to stop the uh, the Soviets but the, yeah it's looking pretty rough from that perspective so yeah not much to say there for the transit segment um, and as we look at the victory point segment um, got what one, two, three, four, uh, five, six. Yeah, six victory points so far. Um, still a far cry from 19, um, but we're getting there, and hopefully it'll become easier and easier to get there. Um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I do think you know, us capturing as the Soviets, um, uh, Belgrade one way or the other, um, or Athens will get a couple more, um, getting into Eastern Europe, that'll be key. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it would, I think we're in okay shape uh, on the Eastern Front. I maybe could be moving faster as the Soviets, um, but I, I, I think we're doing okay. Um, I, I think the key thing, again, is this Romania thing, because we're going we're gonna to end up creating this huge gap that we'll be able to exploit and just cause a whole lot of problems. Um, and it might be, you know, where we start looking at, like, hey, the Carpathian Mountains, if we can just operationally move through them like crazy, like, does that make sense? I don't know. But um, we're going to be chucking and moving, uh, hucking and chucking <laughs> through Eastern Europe, uh, ideally soon, um, for the Soviets. So there you go, guys. That's the end of turn five. 
Uh, in the next video, uh, we will be looking at turn six, which will be the first turn that we can really realistically uh, deal with a D-Day situation, and we will likely be trying to land somewhere in France. Uh, will we pick the historical landing spots? Will we try to venture somewhere else? I, I think that'll be part of the fun that we try to figure out uh, and see what works and what doesn't work. Um, and I'll have to evaluate some of the invasion rules just because almost everywhere in France you really have this sort of like dual landing with the U.S. and the Commonwealth right next to one another. So you kind of have to think through exactly how all of that is going to work uh, a to a certain degree. Like, how, how are you going to do your your uh, supply planning? And we'll get the mulberry marker. That helps a lot. But um, just how are we going to, you know, get from here to Paris? How are we going to get here to Antwerp? And really, the Scheldt campaign is going to be really important. We need to get Antwerp as our primary supply uh, area, but to do that, we have to clear all these guys up here as well. Uh, there's some special rules governing that. So it'll be interesting. A whole other phase of the game is now coming to be, and it will be interesting, I'm sure. So see you in the next one, guys, for all that fun action. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, until next time, take care. Keep on gaming.